Welcome everyone to the Catlin Autocast. My name is Peter Klein. Thank you very much for tuning in to this one today. As you are watching this, I'm on a beach in Mexico. Uh, so this week is, you know, the, the joke guys could just sit around all day naming players. That's what we're doing. <laughs> uh, looking at the top 10 players for uh, some of the franchises that uh, we pay attention to here on Couch Potato Diary. And today, Obviously, uh, on the Catlin Autocast, we are looking at the Toronto Blue Jays. Going to rank my top 10 Blue Jays of all time, and then give my uh, Blue Jays all-time starting lineup. Uh, so that is what we are doing for this one today. Um, I, I kind of gave the my, my Blue Jays watching resume. You can see the, the gruffiness, and there's a, there's a couple of grays in there. There's way more grays up here. Uh, but uh, your boy's been watching Blue Jays baseball for a long time. Um, so through that and statistical analysis, kind of, uh, I've compiled the top Blue Jays of ever. So let's start with the just the, the, the all out. Let's start with the all out top 10 first. Um, and, and we begin at 10. And now through accomplishment alone, he deserves to be on here um, as a human being, given some of uh, the allegations against him. Don't want to heap too much praise on him, but uh, a list of Blue Jays, um, uh, the greatest Blue Jays of all time, would not be complete without Roberto Alomar. So he's a 10. At nine, it is George Bell, a uh, former MVP. Um, he was one of the first real sluggers in Blue Jays history, part of one of the great, still great outfields in Blue Jays history. Uh, 202 home runs with the team, just an absolute masher with some of the pre-World Series Blue Jays teams that I, I do not think get enough credit these days um, for what they were able to do in Toronto in kind of that 85 to 91 window. Um, <clears throat> there were some very, very good Blue Jays baseball teams out there. And George Bell was like at the key for, uh, for a lot of that. Uh, coming in at number eight, it's Jose Bautista. Um, I was living in Toronto when Bautista came onto the scene with the, the, the 50 home run season, 54 home run season. And it, it was right around the time Roy Halladay was leaving and the Blue Jays needed another star. And Jose Bautista was that star. And it all culmin culminates, obviously, uh, 2015, game seven, that home run against the Texas Rangers, one of the all-time great moments in Blue Jays history. Uh, I think he absolutely deserves his place in... Like the, they, they did the big ceremony for him a year ago. Um, he 100% deserves his place in Blue Jay history. Coming in at number seven, a teammate of his and very recently retired Josh Donaldson, uh, the 2015 MVP. And while Bautista and Encarnacion started to lay the foundation for 2015 and the end to the playoff drought that lasted 22 years for Toronto, um... Donaldson, I think, was the real game changer in that. He was the tone setter. And yeah, he can be an arrogant prick. And when he is not on your team, boy, howdy, is he easy to not cheer for. But the the, the swagger and the confidence that he brought to that team was second to none. And I think a huge part of what made this Toronto Blue Jays team believe that they could go on to win the, uh, the, the American League East and get within a couple of games of going to the World Series. And they don't do that without Josh Donaldson um, and his contributions to that team. Um, and then just on the field as well, like so many electric moments, 2016, where he, he scores to, to end the American League Division Series against the Rangers on a ground ball to third when he was at second. Um, some of the big home runs that he was able to hit also played a very good defensive third base for the Blue Jays. And they kind of got him for nothing. All due respect to Brett Laurie. This was... I, I felt it at the time. He was a player who I liked on, on the Oakland A's, who I've always had a bit of a thing for, just for no reason whatsoever. But especially those Oakland A's teams, um, he, he was a great part of that. And to bring him to Toronto and to see that breakout in 15 and 16, I think he deserves to be on this list. At six, it's Jimmy Key. And I will admit, I had a 
bit more of a difficult time making a statistical argument for Jimmy Key than I anticipated. Um, he was with the Blue Jays for a very long time. Um, he's fourth all-time in the team and wins, a two-time all-star. He never really had a ton of dominant seasons with the Blue Jays. He was just Mr. Reliable year after year after year and kind of w was one of the bridges from that pre-World Series team to the World Series team, um, starting, I think, was it game three for Toronto, uh, when they took on the Atlanta Braves back in 1992, he was just, he was Mr. Consistency, um, and he, I think, was such a big part of just having that reliable guy you could throw out there every fifth day to, to go out and get the job done. At number five, it is Carlos Delgado. He is the all-time leader in home runs, three-time Silver Slugger winner, and I think, criminally underrated in the world of Major League Baseball. The fact he only went to a couple of All-Star games in Toronto before he was able to really burst on the scene um, nationally with the New York Mets. He had that year with the Florida Marlins, which is weird. Um, and then he went to the Mets and they almost went to the World Series. He was such a masher in the middle of that lineup and legitimately one of the most feared hitters in all of baseball. Um, and, and like I said before, I think this is someone who was criminally underrated on the Blue Jays. And it sucks to go back and watch some of those old um, clips of him where he's getting the three home run game to get to 300 and they're playing at the, the Sky Dome and the turf is basically just spray painted concrete. And he is hitting bomb after bomb after bomb. And there's nine people in the stands. Man, he just, he is one of those guys in that dark period between 1994 and 2014, basically. After the World Series win, 94, it was clear the wheels were kind of falling off, and the 95, just kaboom, right? And then all the way up to making it into the postseason, he is someone who deserved so much better. So, in a way, I am happy that he was able to get his flowers with the New York Mets. Uh, in another way, I'm really disappointed that it took till then. But, like, you think of him with Vernon Wells and that combination in 03, where they both had, like, 30 home runs by the All-Star break um, in a post -ster for the most part, post-steroid baseball world. Um, it, it's... He... he based on team accomplishment should be higher, but because the, the teams weren't as good, it, it's it's tough, right? In at number four, Joe Carter. Um, obviously, World Series hero, hits the biggest home run in team history. Save me, Alomar, against Eckersley. You, yes, maybe you don't get one without the other, but like he hit the game-winning home run in the World Series and so many big hits. And, and much like we talked about before with Donaldson coming in and changing the attitude around the Blue Jays, Joe Carter and the other guy who came with him from the San Diego Padres um, completely changed the swagger and the, I guess, aura around these Blue Jays teams and took them from a team that can get close but not close enough to a team that can win it all. Joe Carter was all of that. And he is an example. Like, he was my favorite Blue Jay growing up as a kid. And then you kind of get a little bit... I, I was going to say smarter, but I don't know. You think you get smarter. And I... I I don't talk about him a ton, um, but I, I am a, a big proponent of analytics in baseball. Not the analytics that pull Jose Barrios in the fourth inning of playoff games, um, but, you know, I, I do think that there is a, a place for them. And then you, you start, your, your gateway drug into that is, you know, it don't mean shit, runs batted in. And you see Joe Carter, and he has 100 RBI every year, and not necessarily a five-win player. And it's like, you know what? Joe Carter was overrated. And then that was, that was the time where I was like, hey, blah, 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 blah. you know what? Like, First off, like, maybe. Who knows, right? All the guy did was hit 30 home runs and 100 RBI in a year. So, if that's overrated, uh, then the, the rating system is wrong. Like, he was he was the one where I was like, I have gone too far with stats. I, I am not going to let stats ruin a player who I enjoyed, a team that I enjoyed, moments that I enjoyed. No, 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 no. I need to, I need to back off because I'm being the asshole here. So Joe Carter was my snap back to reality uh, moment with, with uh, analytics and whatnot, because I, I just, I loved him as a kid. Um, and just one of, one of my like heroes as a child. And he comes in at number four. At number three, it is Dave Steeb. I think legitimately the most underrated player in the history of baseball. If Dave Steeb put up the numbers that he did and the near perfect games every time out, basically, that he did with the Yankees or the Red Sox or the Dodgers, there would be statues and he would be 
considered one of the greatest of all time. Instead, he was on the Blue Jays, who don't get enough credit, and didn't make it to the big dance, and by the time they did, he wasn't really a huge part of it. Um, and so, he kind of gets left behind in overall baseball history. And when the, the Otani stuff was going down during the offseason, and it was like, well, the, the, he's going to a going to a real baseball market in LA and it's good for the game that he's not going to Toronto. I was like, the Blue Jays now need to be fucking obnoxious about things. And one of it is, and one of the things they need to be obnoxious about is celebrating their history. And a big part of that is Dave Steeb. Uh, they have honored him before. Do it again just because. Because this guy was awesome. He has the best war in team history. The most complete games by a billion in team history. Basically every time he pitched in the mid to late 80s, he almost threw a perfect game. This was legitimately one of the more dominant pitchers of the 80s and just criminally criminally underrated. And so, honestly, he might even be underrated on this list. I said he's best all time in Blue Jays war. I, I, I could legitimately make a case for him to be number one. Uh, coming in at number two, Tony Fernandez. Um, fourth all time in Blue Jays war, just a lifer with Toronto. Even when he ventured away, right? San Diego, then he comes back to the Blue Jays. Goes off, plays in the World Series uh, with Cleveland, comes back to Toronto. Goes off, plays with the, the, the Yankees, comes back to Toronto. He was a Blue Jay through and through. Um, you needed him to play second base, he'd play second base. You needed him to play shortstop, he'll play shortstop. Third base, fine. Need him to get on base, he'll get on base. Need him to do a slap bunt down the third base line, slap bunt it is. Need a home run, he's hit a few. Um, like he just, he could do it all for the, the Toronto Blue Jays. And uh, again, another one of those guys who I think is in the, the, the history of the sport, pretty underrated for how talented of a fielder he was, how good with the bat he was, how smart of a baseball player he was. So I, I, I think that longevity and success leads this guy to being the number two in uh, Blue Jays history. And in at number one, Roy Doc Holiday, the 03 Cy Young winner, a 22 game se uh, win season, holds so many Blue Jays records, and it would be more if Dave Steeb wasn't freaking awesome. Um, Roy Halladay is number one. He was the one of the dominant pitchers of his era. He's in the Hall of Fame for good reason. Um, the the story is amazing. He comes up and in, in uh, it might have been his first, it was one of his first starts as a rookie against the Detroit Tigers. He takes a no hitter into the ninth before Bobby Higginson hits one into the bullpen. And then the wheels fall off. He gets sent all the way down to single A Dunedin, works his way up, and turns himself into a dominant pitcher. No one competed the way Roy Halladay did. And you knew you were getting 100% of Roy Halladay every time he took that baseball for the Blue Jays. And you knew you had a chance to win every fifth day when Roy Halladay was on the mound. And it is a damn shame that his only playoff venture was with the Philadelphia Phillies, where he won a freaking Cy Young with them too. Um, it's a damn shame that that ended up being the case because he deserved so much better in Toronto. And he should have been a Blue Jays lifer, but you have no problem with the Blue Jays trading him to Philadelphia. So he had a chance to go off and compete for a championship. Didn't end up happening, but it, it was great that Unfortunately, that national spotlight didn't shine very bright on Toronto, so he was able to get that with the Philadelphia Phillies. So Roy Halladay is my number one all-time Blue Jay. Let's go over my all-time Blue Jay starting lineup. Uh, at catcher, he is a World Series MVP. It is Pat Borders. Uh, first base, we've already gone through it, Carlos Delgado. Second base, Alomar. Third base, Josh Donaldson. A, a few candidates here, right? Like, some, some very, very good ones. If you're looking at the best third baseman who's ever played with the Blue Jays. It might be Scott Rowland. Um, but Donaldson is, is the pick here, the, the former MVP. At shortstop, it's Fernandez. Um, in left field, it is Joe Carter. Center field, I had a lot of back and forth on this one because this Blue Jays team has had some excellent center fielders. Um, honorable mention to Vernon Wells, but I just can't not put Devon White in the game in center field. He has to be my number one as the uh, the, the all-time center fielder on my all-time Toronto Blue Jays team. But there, like, there are a number of others, right? But um, Devon White takes it for me. Right field could go Bell. I do go Jose Bautista. 
he he just he was a notch above Bell on my all time list, so I I have to put Bautista on there. And my designated hitter is Edwin Encarnacion. My starting rotation is Halliday, Steeb, and Key, uh, along with if I can pick eras, Juan Guzman, like World Series years, Juan Guzman, who like started out and was such a dominant pitcher, specifically in 92, when maybe Jack Morris wasn't rolling the way the Blue Jays needed him to. Jimmy Key is kind of winding down his Blue Jays run. Uh, Juan Guzman comes in and is just electric for Toronto. Um, And then at five, someone who I think is underrated in Blue Jay circles, uh, Pat Hankin, former Cy Young winner, uh, a dominant couple years there. He gets in the all-time starting five. Uh, And then our bullpen, we're not going to do a full bullpen, but our closer... The Terminator, Tom Hankey. Um, our setup man is Dwayne Ward, and our other setup guy is Jordan Romano. Uh, all right, that is the all time list for all time Toronto Blue Jays. If you like this, boy, do I have a treat for you, because this is the rest of the week um, doing team specific shows. So coming up tomorrow, it is going to be my all time Calgary Flames list. On Wednesday, it is going to be my all-time Toronto Raptors one. That is going to be for Dynamite. So, uh, Cat and Autocast today, Blasty Banter tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, it is Dynamite. Thursday and Friday, I don't have all the branding ready for these teams yet, so they're just going to be regular Couch Potato Diary episodes, uh, but it is going to be two more team-specific podcasts that I'll be doing when their seasons get going. On Thursday, we will look at the greatest Saskatchewan Rough Riders of all time, and on Friday, it's my Vegas Raiders, who we will do one through ten. Uh, if you have any thoughts on this list, leave a comment, like the video, um, and subscribe. If you're listening in podcast form, um, leave a review and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts, follow me on social media. I am at Primetime Klein, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in today. I had a blast putting this list together. Hopefully, I didn't sound too much like an idiot and you agree with at least some of those picks. Uh, but uh, yeah, let me know if you're watching on YouTube in the comments below. And if you're listening, let me know on social media. Um, and yeah, that's what the, the whole week's gonna be. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Talk to you guys later. <laughs>